Hey, what's going on guys? Hey, when I'm in class, one of the things that happens on a regular basis is, is I get people asking me, you know, Colin, should I be doing the CISSP or should I be doing the CASP? Uh, most of the people who are asking me that question are people that are involved in the, in the DOD, I mean, you know, 8570, 8140 world. Uh, and they're trying to figure out based upon, you know, industry recognition of the certifications as well as uh, their job requirements, which certification they should get. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and have a chat about that. I know for myself, one of the first questions that I asked was, was why does CASP exist? You know, CISSP exists. Why, oh why, did we need yet another certification? There are so many certifications out there these days that a lot of times when somebody hands me their business card, I got to go sit down and Google what all the different certifications they have means. And I'm in the certification industry. It's insane. So I have more than a little bit of, of cynicism on the topic. And what I see is that you've got the CISSP certification, which is a very well-respected, um, very well-known certification. It's been around since 1994. Okay, it's been around for a very long time. A lot of people covet that certification and want to get it. Now, never mind your opinions on whether it's a good certification or not for a moment. We'll talk about that stuff later. But now you have a situation where, in particularly with DOD 8570 or 8140, you got a situation where in order to get certain jobs, you had to have your CISSP certification. And then there were other jobs where it was okay for you to just have your Security Plus certification. Now, since CISSP comes from ISC squared and Security Plus comes from CompTIA, what I see is that there is a long-standing sort of monetary pathway that existed where people who were coming into the DOD world and information assurance types roles were going in and saying, okay, first thing I got to do is I got to get my Security Plus certification. Okay, there goes some money for CompTIA. And then as their career progresses and they want to move into higher level roles within the DOD or in government contractors, then they have to go in and look and say, oh, well, I now need to get my security or my CISSP certification. Well, that's money for ISC squared. Now, here's my cynical man, is that I can imagine the powers that be at CompTIA looking at that going, oh, I don't like that. I want that money. Show me the money. Okay, now they're both nonprofits, but come on, you need money to operate. So CASP was... I'm, and they, you know, CompTIA would never admit this, but CASP was born. And so now there's actually a monetary pathway for CompTIA to be able to benefit all the way through somebody's evolution through the information assurance hierarchy in the DOD government contractor world. And so now somebody can go in and get their Security Plus certification, and then as their career moves on, they can then go in and get their CASP certification rather than necessarily having to get their CISSP certification. So in a lot of ways, it's going to be all about money. But that's not just, that's not it, okay? There's more to it than that. So let's go ahead and, and keep going and break it down some more. All right, let's look at the basics right now. First things first, CISSP, 250 questions, six hours to take the exam, $599. Wow, that's expensive to take it. If you don't pass, they'll tell you what your score was. If you do pass, they just tell you that you passed. You have to get a 700 out of a possible 1,000 points to pass the exam. Now, the CASP exam, up to 90 questions. $426 in the United States to take. There's a link down below that shows you how much it costs in other, in other countries. Um, it's pass-fail only, so there is no score to be had. You either pass it or you don't. Is either one of these certifications going to make you better at your job? Uh, the short answer to that is probably not. Okay. The, both of these certifications proudly proclaim that they are vendor neutral. Vendor neutrality, which again, I'm sort of a cynic on this, vendor neutrality in most exams means uh, Cisco, Microsoft, and Linux. Okay, so it's, it's, it's not as vendor neutral as they would always suggest. But there's a lot of Cisco, Microsoft, and Linux in the world, so I guess that's okay. But the truth of it is, is that these things focus a lot on, on, on how you would do something or why you would do something or what's, what's important to consider in this sort of a scenario, none of which always directly translates into actual life. So if you really want something that's going to be a truly technical certification from a sort of hands-on perspective, then it really needs to be a vendor certification. Okay, because it's the vendor who has the product that has the interfaces that have to be configured to do the stuff that you want them to do. Concepts are important so that you understand what it is that you're doing when you're doing it. But when it comes to actually putting, you know, fingers to keyboards, neither of these certifications is particularly involved when it comes to going in and doing that. Now, I got my CISSP certification back in 2002, which makes me an antique amongst other things. But... One of the things that I distinctly remember in going through the process of earning that certification back then was that I developed a significantly better appreciation for how all of these things go together.
because it's almost a certainty that you are not going to be an expert in all these different areas and that you're going to be rock star material in some areas and eh, in others. But when you're forced to go in and learn a lot about a bunch of different things, it gives you a better awareness, a better appreciation for the way that things are done within your organization and maybe, maybe just maybe a lot of the whys of why things are being done in the organization. And so those things that you historically have looked at and go, man, that's so stupid that we do it that way, I cannot believe it. After you've been through the pain and heartache of actually internalizing and understanding what it is that a CISSP is supposed to know, you might be able to look at those things and go, yeah, they still suck, but I get it now. I understand why we're doing it. Uh, it makes a lot of sense and it's a necessary evil kind of a deal. Um, but uh, th that's one of the big values that I would say that this certification certainly has. It also allows you, particularly if you're a CISSP, it allows you to go sit into a meeting uh, with a whole bunch of people who are you know, software developers or, or DBAs or you know, uh, network engineers or you know, security analysts. or You start rattling off different job functions and titles and things like that. You can go sit with all those people and you can hang. You don't necessarily know how to do all the stuff that they know how to do, but you can participate in the conversation. You know when to throw that BS flag and be like, you know what, no, what you just said, that's not right. Bye, Felicia. Now, I don't necessarily know how to do what it is that you're talking about doing, but I know what you just said is not how it's supposed to be done. So um, that's, that's really one of the big key kind of selling points is that as a manager, you can hang and participate in these conversations on a tremendously diverse number of topics. Now, one thing that I will say about the CASP exam versus the CISSP exam is that when it comes to being truly technical in nature, or as technical as these types of exams can be, the CASP is certainly a more technical exam. The CISSP certainly has its share of technical related questions, but it definitely focuses on things that are much more administrative or management um, in, their, in their overall focus and goal. So if you just want something that is, is very high level and more managerial, then the CISSP certification is a good consideration. If you're looking for something that is more, uh, more close or akin to the idea of being hands-on technical, then the CASP certification is going to be the winner for you. CompTIA says that the CAS certification is really targeted and geared towards people who are cybersecurity professionals, information security auditors, um, other types of uh, InfoSec professional type people. The CISSP certification, by contrast, trumpets itself as being geared towards people who are in executive level roles, like a CIO type person in an organization. Uh, they also go in to say that they're focused on people who are, say, security auditors or security managers, security analysts, uh, people who are filled into those particular kinds of worlds. Now, if you're in the DOD world, both certifications are good for jobs that are at IAM level 2 and below or IAT level 3 and below. The real distinguishing difference is, is that the CISSP is, is acceptable for positions that require you to be IAM level 3, whereas the CASP exam does not currently support that. Uh, but none of the CND roles currently um, accept either one of these, CASP or CISSP, because those are, should be significantly more technical approaches than what the other these certifications really go in and do. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about money. Um, in addition to the exam cost, which is significant, remember it's 600 bucks or $599 to take the CISSP exam, it's $426 to take the CASP exam. Now, those are single sit exam fees. This isn't one of those just you right, pay that money and take it till you pass it kind of deals. You got to pay that money every single time. Okay, so it is an expensive exam to take and making donations to CompTIA or ISC Squared should not be things that are high on your agenda list. So you very much want to take these exams once. The second thing is that these exams require uh, annual maintenance fees. Now, the annual maintenance fee for the ISC Squared CISSP certification is $85 a year. It's $50 a year for uh, the CASP certification. Both certifications also require you to do continuing education. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I know. They're called doctors. Now, uh, ISC Squared calls it CPE, Continuing Professional Education, and uh, CompTIA calls it CE, Continuing Education, but it's the same basic notion for each one of them. They want you to demonstrate that you still are an active participant in the industry, and the way that it works for ISC Squared is you have to get 120 CPEs over the course of your three-year um, certificate cycle. For CASP, you have to get 75 CEs over the three-year certificate cycle. 
What is or is not acceptable as CPEs and more details on that is down below, but suffice to say you have continuing education requirements for both of them. What is nice is that the continuing education that you do for one may be perfectly acceptable for the other. So it's not like you have to go out and have completely different continuing education experiences in order to be able to use them for both certs. And so if you do something like go to you know, Black Hat or something like that, that's gonna be stuff that you can submit as continuing education for both certifications simultaneously. So which one should you do? After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. Um, if you're in the DOD contractor world and you need to get a job that requires you to have a specific IAT or IAM level, then um, if you're IAM level three, then CISSP is your answer. If you're going to be at IAM level two or lower, or IAT level three um, or lower, then either one of the certifications works. The CASP certification is going to be more narrowly focused and having a stronger emphasis on things that are technical in nature, whereas the CISSP is going to be much broader in its scope um, and it's also going to be um, overall less technical than the CASP exam is going to be. So uh, let your kind of own your professional goals kind of dictate that in terms of how you're going to do that, but then also go in and ask yourself, um, where are you going in the future? Because even though if you were to go to CompTIA's website right now and look at the CAS certification, they talk about how it's industry recognized and it's a global standard, uh, it does not carry anywhere close to the level of recognition that CISSP does. I'm not saying CASP isn't going to get there, but CASP, you're a little too new to try and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with CISSP and think that people are going to recognize your name just as well. Okay. And again, that's not me being some kind of super huge advocate of CISSP over CASP. I'm just saying that that's what the current case and state of affairs is as of, you know, here we are in the middle of uh, 2017. All right, so there you have it. Those are my 13 and a half cents on the CISSP versus the CASP exam. Um, in practical application, I'd probably just get both. But if you're really just looking to get one versus the other, let your career choices guide you and then let um, where you really kind of find your emphasis and focus. Do you really want to be more in the, in the management and executive world of dealing with information security, or do you have a kind of an angle towards things that are more technical in nature? Um, if you want to go the management route, roll with the CISSP. If you want to go with the more technical route, roll with the CASP. Uh, if you want to have you know, bo both and be able to have all kinds of cool letters after your business card or after your email signature, go ahead and do that too and get both of them. So if you want to read all that stuff that I just said, there's a link down below to an article that I wrote about this um, a, a while back. So it kind of goes in and says all the same things that I conveyed to you guys right here. So there's a link down there for that. And then there's also some links that you'll find down in the description below that go in and link to continuing education requirements and some other things that you might find useful and relevant about these two certifications. So hopefully that helps you as you decide. Let me know in the comments which exam you think you decided you're going to take. I want to know, are you going to take the CISSP or are you going to take the CASP? So I look forward to hearing back from you on that. See you later.